Hey, welcome back. It's Michelle. And Miguel. So today we are going to talk about Artemis. Artemis. What was that? I have no idea. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at Miguel's version of Artemis. And just boop. Yeah, so just a few interesting things to run down that maybe most people don't know about. One of the reasons I chose Artemis is that she's actually quite a fascinating goddess. And compared to other gods and goddesses in Greek mythology, you've likely heard about Hercules, Zeus, Athena, Poseidon, or Hades, I'm sure. But not so much is known about Artemis. Although there are a lot of stories and mythologies like every other god and goddess, so I've figured I'd bring up the fact that, for example, uh, there was a story where Artemis fell in love with a mortal being. And Artemis, being a goddess of the hunts, there was this human who was also known for hunting, and he in turn also fell in love with Artemis. And at this point of the mythology timeline, it is quite punishable to be mingling with the humans. So as punishment for falling in love with Orion, uh, Zeus sent a scorpion to sting Orion, he gets killed, and thus you have the constellation Orion's belt. He was stung at the, the belt area. Another fun fact about Artemis, why I chose her, is that there are three goddesses that are described to not have any sense of sexuality, and those are Artemis, Athena, and Hestia. In those times, they couldn't quite describe what it is as to why they have no feelings or the way uh, folk writers would describe the way they have no feelings of like intimacy. In today's times, we label that as asexuality. So Artemis is actually asexual. Besides that internal reason, I like that Artemis is a goddess of the hunts, therefore she's a very physical character. And this was a great opportunity for me to enhance my skills in drawing anatomy. So I would say that out of the many digital illustrations, this is by far one of my most proudest work is drawing Artemis and being able to articulate the bodily proportions and lighting and skin and the details and the clothing. How did you go about designing her, her look? Because uh, if you're not familiar with our work, Miguel tends to go for like a very fantasy style, so... Um, so I actually had Millie a little bit of help with my lovely sister and, you know, being able to bring out like what looks right in clothing and design. But for me, I would say when I started out, I try to put my own take on the way the helmet is made and the bow and perhaps the armor too. I usually just use my imagination. I hardly take from references at the time. Now I do, and it's actually quite fun. But for this, I like to play around with helmets a lot. I tend to create like fantastical looking helmets and weapons. And so if you look at the helmet area, it's like very otherworldly. So I did want to also emphasize that these are mythical and divine beings. So I figured, okay, well, it wouldn't be like that too familiar, so I purposely tried to make it fantastical and not that familiar to emphasize that these are celestial beings, they're not like from this world. That's the reason I made these uh, design choices. What I really like about how you approach this design overall, like I just, I really like how you made her a very fierce like pose, like she is about to just nail somebody's heart, I don't know, <laughs> or show, show a bow. And I really like the colors you picked here because I think, I don't know if in some point we're watching this, but you did have like a different change of style. It was like kind of rough, but now this, around this time, it's a little bit cleaner. It's Actually, I, I kind of find this very, like, I could see this actually in an animated, like, scene. And so I really appreciate you kind of simplifying some details, really make it more solidified in terms of placing her in a time or space. So going back to the colors, it kind of does represent that sort of, not purity or innocence, but just kind of there's this association with the stars or the, the galaxy and in association yeah. with the story of Orion. Uh, otherworldly, I guess yeah, you could say. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of interesting contrast because she seems like a very fierce person but in a very like light colored color tones and stuff so I really like this one this is also my favorite Oh, thank you. So uh, if you have any comments and what you think about my work, please let us know. I just I do want to leave one final thing to say and that is that I actually don't 
feel like going back to redo it. I'm actually quite proud of this. It's like, wow, this actually feels legitimate. It's done and done. And in fact, I would probably even use this as a reference. Like, huh, what did I do right in this one that I could carry over to the next character illustration? So uh, thanks again as usual, and we'll stay tuned for the next video. All right, see you around. Bye.